Good morning and welcome to another edition of Double G Sports Talk Saturday. I am Dave Grimm. That's me right there. That's Clifton Garmouth right there. And we have another great show for you lined up this morning. We've got two uh, big guests for you. And whoever else wanders up, we may stick them on TV. We've got Gail Mag, who is the author of a book about a... Uh, Old Paragould Bulldogs football coach named Jack Dale. Former football coach here many, many years ago. Title of the book, Jack Dale, The Life and Times of an Unforgettable Coach. That's available on Amazon. We're going to talk a lot about that. Clifton's going to talk to him uh, very shortly. Uh, also got to do another uh, uh, edition of our Legends series. Uh, we went over to the other side of Memphis. We went over to Collierville earlier this week. And got to sit down and talk to the biggest name in professional fishing ever, Bill Dance. And we'll have that for you also. I think we may have some other surprise guests wander up. Who knows? But uh, that's on tap for us today. If you were watching last night, you saw the uh, basketball game that we brought to you. Crowley's Ridge at uh, Ridgefield Christian. That was a replacement game because when... Uh, was scheduled to play Brooklyn. They could not because they were still playing football. And they played football last night. And they beat the Watson Chapel Wildcats 35-7 <clears throat> uh, and advanced into the second round of the playoffs. And the other five A East teams playing in the playoffs last night, Batesville, uh, won their game. They played against uh, Lakeside, my elementary alma mater, Hot Springs Lakeside beat them handily 54 to 14 so they will advance in the second round of the playoffs the other two 5a east teams uh, not so well four city uh in what was a close game at times lost to whitehall at whitehall 35 to 19 and then uh bb ran into a freight train last night camden fairview well anyone that was going to received that fourth spot in the 5A East was going to run into a freight train. 70 to 20. The score, they had 63 at halftime. They only scored seven points in the second half. They just, they may not have, they may, they may let the junior high play. In the you know, I know half. every one, I think we had five teams at one time in the last two weeks of the season that was trying to get into that fourth spot. <laughs> For and, what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, because we had been talking about that, that, you know, there, it's going to be one game. It's not really a prize to yeah. go play at Camden Fairview and get the fool knocked out of you. Yeah. But uh, that's what happened. So <clears throat> we're two weeks away from the potential win Camden Fairview showdown at Win. Win's got to play Moralton first. And we talked about this with Coach Hill last week. That was the potential matchup, the expected matchup between his old Devil Dogs. And his new Yellow Jackets. So that's going to be a game of interest next week. <clears throat> and uh, Batesville is on the road next week to face the number one seed out of the West, the Greenbrier Panthers. And let's tell our, our listeners that all the games up all the way to the final game, or up to the final game, is that win. That's right. So the road if, to the playoffs goes through win. If there's anyone around here that uh, wants to go watch any of those playoff games, you know, that's just an hour and a half down the road. It's not a bad drive. We drive it all the time. Sure. So, um, you know. And, and we may, you know, well, I say that. We've got basketball games to broadcast, but he's threatening to bail on me if Wynn and Camden Fairview meet up in that third round. He's threatening, <laughs> to, he's threatening to let me have it and him go down and watch that football game. So, in fact, I'm going to bring that up right now to see what basketball game would be competing with that win football game next week. I'll tell you the next four basketball dates that we have. Uh, Tuesday night, we are going to Nettleton. Watch one of our 5A East teams in a doubleheader. Girls and boys hosting uh, cross, uh, right up the street rivals, the Brooklyn Bearcats. That's Tuesday night, doubleheader, girls and boys. Uh, Friday night, and this game is iffy, depending on, and I haven't looked at the 2A bracket uh, McCrory scheduled to play Marmaduke in a boys matchup, in a conference matchup. We're scheduled to bring it to you, but if McCrory won last night in the playoffs, I don't think that game's going to happen. So that game could be next. That, that, yeah, we may have to find a replacement game for this coming Friday. And then next week, <clears throat> the week after this coming week, uh, the, the Tuesday night game is Augusta 
at Rector, girls and boys. That's a conference matchup. New conference opponent in the the uh, three double A conference. Going back to Rector. And then that Friday night, um, you know what? That Friday night is Thanksgiving weekend. And depending on whether or not we do the Rumble on the Ridge in Forest City that weekend. Yeah, I've not heard back from Mr. Bill Baxter. Well, a possibility. if we don't, we're actually scheduled off that weekend, and it won't be a conflict. We could go watch that ball game at, down at Wynn, Cannon Fairview at Wynn. We wouldn't broadcast it because of the AAA rules about the playoffs and yada, right. yada. But I could live tweet from the game, and we could go down there and watch the game. Sure. So if we don't do the Rumble on the Ridge, we will go down and watch uh, Cannon Fairview play win. I bet you this man sitting over to my left that's going to be on in a minute remembers games being played here right here in Paragool around Thanksgiving time. Uh-huh. The Thanksgiving Classic used to be between Tech and Paragool. Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. No, not football. Yeah. No. I looked it up. No. There's never been. Back in the, in the, in the 30s and 40s and 50s, they played that game on Thanksgiving. Tech didn't even have football. They played somebody very – yeah, that's – no, I'm, I'm serious. I looked that up. David. Okay. <laughs> We're going to argue on All the right. air now. No. We do this Tech a lot. Did, Tech didn't have football until 1972. Okay. Well, then who did, who was it that they played in the great big Thanksgiving classic that they had? I, I don't know. Why is Mr. Mag here? I'm He'll out. know. He'll know. He'll know. So, we'll have that also for you. Now, um, the – Let's go, let's go ahead and look at those matchups one more time because I don't know if I did that or not, and I've already backed out of it. But we know that Wynn is hosting Moralton. Yes, I did do this. We know Wynn is hosting Moralton. We know that Batesville is traveling to Greenbrier. Now, the other matchups in the 5A bracket, the ones that are leading up to those showdowns, Camden Fairview will host Alma. Alma, the only upset winner last night in the 5A bracket. They upset Little Rock Mills, uh, a three-seed beating a two-seed in that in that uh, contest. And then Whitehall will travel to Pulaski Academy. That ought to be a really good game also. I'm telling you, the state championship game will play will be played a week early when Cannon Fairview goes to win. That would be the legitimate state championship, two teams that should have been in it. But they're on the same side of the bracket. So I'm looking at a win Batesville rematch for the state championship. Okay, you've been saying that the whole time. I've been saying that for weeks. The only team I see in Batesville's way is Pulaski Academy. They'll give them a run. But I think Batesville will make it to that final game. Well, I guarantee you. Give me any thoughts? Coach, well, I just fixed us. I guarantee you Coach King will have his team prepared. Oh, absolutely. Week in and week out. They've never been so, not prepared. No. Uh, coach King, awesome coach. And. He's, not, he's used to being in the playoffs. He's used to being in the big game. Champion, he's been in the championship game, you know, five or six times His since he's been there. His players are used to being there. That's right. That that program is, uh, uh, well, just like when. They've got a really, really long tradition of winning, and I think they're headed for a, a showdown in the championship game. So, we uh, that's that. We've got guests lined up. Are you about ready to uh, take a break and uh, bring sure. on our first guest? Sure. What we'll do is we'll take a – we'll take two or five. Three? Four, yeah. Okay, four-minute break. Not five. Okay, four-minute break. Four-minute break. And when we come back, we uh, Clifton is going to talk to Gail Mag, author of the Jack Dale biography, Jack Dale, The Life and Times of an Unforgettable Coach. And we'll be doing that in about four minutes on your primetime sports.com. Do you need insurance? If the answer is yes, let Chris Robinson and his staff at Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency Handle your needs, whether it's auto, life, business, or planning for your retirement. Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency is ready to serve you and your family. Come by Chris Robinson Insurance Agency, 1211 West Court Street in Paragould. You get big time savings. At First National Bank, you have convenience right at your fingertips. 
and instant buying power. It's so easy. And when you're on the go, well, you know what to do. We understand the importance of now. First National Bank, the working bank for working people. When you feel bad and it's after regular office hours, turn to CR Doc. Here's Dr. Roger Cagle. At CR Doc, we offer more than the standard family medicine practice. We have extended office hours with on site lab and x ray, as well as casting and suturing capabilities, giving you an alternative to those crowded emergency rooms for all your minor injuries and accidents that need fast, complete medical attention. Appointments are available but not necessary. CR Doc, in the King Carroll Suites on West Kings Highway in Peril Gold in front of Walmart. At CR Doc, we are patient people. Retirement? It's never looked so good. Welcome to Chateau on the Ridge Assisted Living in Paragould, Arkansas. Say hello to fine dining and down-home living, where around-the-clock security and peace of mind are always at your fingertips. And front row seats to the best shows? They're included. We call it Chateau on the Ridge. You can call it home. Call or visit today to get the whole scoop. Mr. T's Riverside Cafe in Cardinal, Missouri, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Open seven days a week, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Join us after the game for a pizza or our delicious hickory smoked barbecue. Just a short drive across the Kahlua-colored waters of the St. Francis River at the Arkansas-Missouri State Line in the scenic resort town of Cardinal, Missouri. Mr. T's at Riverside. Kavanaugh Kia's pre-owned superstore. Your one-stop car shop to find the vehicle you deserve. Every make and model is right here on our lot. Chevy, Ford, Toyota, Nissan, Lincoln, Cadillac, and more. With a huge selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. We also have a great variety of certified pre-owned Kias with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. You'll never have to drive anywhere else than Kavanaugh Kia's pre-owned superstore. Visit us today on Stadium Boulevard, just south of the bypass. Or online at KavanaughKia.com. We opened our maximum free checking account online. It took less than 15 minutes. With Focus Bank, you can easily open your maximum free checking or Max Savers account online. And with mobile banking, you'll always stay in control. Whether you're looking for a free checking account, an interest bearing account, or a rewards checking account, Focus Bank has a solution for you. Mobile banking with Focus Bank makes our life easier. Visit focusbank.com and sign up for a new account with mobile banking today. Hi, I'm Metal Rock Lemon, and when I'm in Northeast Arkansas, when I watch sports, I watch all my sports on YourPrimeTimeSports.com. You should too. Welcome back to YourPrimeTimeSports.com here live at Batten's Bakery in Paragool, Arkansas. I have a very long time and dear friend of mine with us this morning, uh, Mr. Gail Mack, who has wrote his own biography of the book that you just seen up there on the camera about his coach, Jack Dale. Yep. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So uh, what, uh, tell us. We want to dig into this book and, and hear some stories and hear about Mr. Dale. And I've always heard of him. I didn't know him personally. But uh, tell us what inspired you to, um, to to even think about writing a book about your former football coach. Well, you, you know, I never had any uh, thoughts of writing a book uh, until uh, my school classmates and, and my sons, they began to they had heard these stories, and we'd all shared stories at class reunions. And uh, they asked me to start uh, writing, putting some of these stories down. And uh, and uh, I started putting some of the stories that I knew about Jack Dale. And I knew Jack well. He and I were friends uh, from the day we met. And uh, I intended to put together a little booklet, maybe 20 or 30 pages, you know, and 20 or 30 copies, and send them to the to the ones who uh, might might want the book, and uh, Coach Dale Hanks, who followed Jack Dale here at Perry Goo Coaching, uh, he heard that I was doing this, and uh, he sent me an email from from uh, Virginia, and said that he was putting together a book about Jack Dale, 
And uh, after a while, we began to realize we were talking about the same Jack Dale. And uh, there was only one Jack Dale and only one Perry Ghoul. So at that time, the book really began to grow. And uh, <clears throat> But I had no idea I was going to put a book together. When I started this thing, uh, it was going to be a little booklet with a few stories in it. And it just began to grow. And uh, uh, then my some of my nieces saw my manuscript, and they began to tell me, like, hey, we need to make a book out of this. And uh, I'll just, I just let them... Uh, kind of take the lead on it that's what we got well it's pretty neat because i have i haven't had a chance to read all the way through the book uh but uh, i do have a copy uh i, I you've seen metal arc lemon there a minute ago i got a copy of his book and i hadn't even hardly got started on it yet so i'm mm -hmm. on the run all the time yeah he but, was in uh, town a few days ago yes he was well tell us um a little bit about mr dale coach dale uh what how was practices back in those times? And, and, and before you go to that question right there, Dave and I were talking about a minute ago, Friday Night Football, and we were talking about possible win Camden Fairview game being on the weekend of Thanksgiving. Back when you played, didn't they have Thanksgiving football games at, at the old Harmon Playfield? We had a regular Thanksgiving That's game, and it was with uh, Jonesboro. We played Jonesboro every Thanksgiving. That was a big rivalry. And uh, we didn't have playoffs. Back then, football was a lot different back in the 50s than what it is today. Different only in the uh, the size and conditioning of the athlete and the, uh, the complicated offense and defensive schemes that they set up today. Uh, I doubt that very many TV analysis would know what to say if they, they saw a, uh, a straight T formation. They probably wouldn't <laughs> know what it was, you know. But, uh, of course, and we run an old single wing, which was – it was considered to be obsolete back in those days. But now then, today, you see that same single wing formation being used uh, in pro, college, everywhere. Everybody's running an old single wing formation. They call it the slot back or, you know, wildcat, something else. But right. it's, it's really just a little variation of the old single wing like we ran when I was in high school. Like you ran with a little... Uh, uh bells and whistles added to it it's got a lot of bells and whistles added to it and it's got more complicated especially on defense we played defense uh we called our our, our defense was called as a five four two or seven two two something like that we all lined up in the same place we didn't jump around we just tried to beat the guy in front of us uh but it's got a lot more complicated now and the athletes have gotten so much bigger uh, I played against one 300-pound athlete in football when I was in high school. And now every team's got them in high school. Bigger and stronger and faster. And, faster. Uh, yeah. and speed is such a uh, a, a big uh, key yeah. for every team, you know, in every sport. You know, speed's the key. It is. We had a lot of speed back then when we were playing. We had good athletes, a lot of speed, but they were 160, 70-pound athletes. And now then they're 190, 230-pound or um, of course, defensive linemen are 300-pounders in a lot of cases. And, uh, now, you played with the Paragol Bulldogs, obviously. What what years in the senior high were your your three years of playing with the Paragol Bulldogs? Uh, Jack Dale came here in the springtime of 53 to coach uh, the 54 season. And uh, I was a freshman when he came here in that spring. So I played with him as a sophomore that fall. I was with him the first three years he was here for on his second stint. He coached here two times. And uh, he was such a different type of an individual. Jack Dale would look at you, he'd just stare, stare at you, tell you a funny story, and he'd never crack a grin. He just, and you didn't know whether to laugh or not. But how did you guys keep from laughing if it was a funny story? Well, <laughs> we usually laughed. After a while, you get to know him, and you begin to laugh at him. Well, he, he, he must have been, uh, you know, a very humorous man, uh, maybe a dry sense of humor as, as the way you describe it. But anyway, he, he was had some humor about himself. But obviously the type of coach that I think uh, every parent may want their son or daughter to play under, someone that you look up to, that you he teaches you good moral values, 
Well, I don't know. I don't know if parents would really wanted their sons playing under Jack Dale. Is that I, right? Jack, now, I've not got into this book, so 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 lead me here. Tell me, tell me why. Jack was uh, he was mean. He in was, what sort of way? Well, he uh, he was mean on the football field in practice. Okay, he talked to you rough. Really, Jack had a bad vocabulary. He could. Uh, <laughs> He would, uh, though, I guess. Well, scratch my, scratch my statement then. <laughs> yeah, he was, uh, but at the same time, everybody in Greene County <clears throat> and Perry Gould, everybody knew Jack Dale. Jack Dale was a very visible person around, especially downtown. We didn't have a Walmart shopping centers. Right. Places. It was all downtown. Pruitt Street was Walmart. Pruitt wasn't Street it? was it, and Jack was very visible down there. He walked everywhere. And uh, during several years of his walking, he uh, had a monkey sitting on his shoulder. Uh, Jack actually owned a couple of monkeys, and they would, uh, uh, one of them in particular loved to go to the taverns with him. And Jack <laughs> visited a lot of taverns. This one monkey that he had uh, uh, would uh, sit at the bar and could take a mug of beer with his front paws and hoist it up and drink it. And everybody thought that was pretty cute, watching a monkey drink beer at a bar. And uh, so they would always buy the monkey a beer. And, of course, Jack said they always bought me one, too, you know. <laughs> Jack said it was the best investment he ever made, that monkey. And the monkey finally got sick, had uh, cirrhosis of the liver, and Jack had to put him away. But he said he did give him a good funeral. <laughs> that was the type of fellow. But everybody knew Jack because he walked around town. He had a monkey with him about half the time. And, now, was uh, Coach Dale married? Yes. He married a Spillman. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, that's how they wound up in Prairie Gould. When Jack, Jack was a big football star at the University of Arkansas. He was uh, all-conference. He uh, <clears throat> was all decayed. Uh, his name's listed in all the programs that you, if you go to a Razorback football game now, you go look at the all-decay teams, and Jack is in there for the 30s. And... Uh, but he, he met Halliby Spillman while he was at the university. And uh, they got the sparking. And the next thing you know, they're getting married and moving to, per moving to Perry School. Actually, he came to Arkansas State as the, as the head football coach right out of college. Right after he graduated from the University of Arkansas, he came to Arkansas State. And just this past year, I noticed in uh, the Jonesboro, paper he was listed as one of the first coaches ever as the first coach ever at arkansas state to win six games in his first season so he spent two years coaching at arkansas state and then his old buddy ralph hazlip who was superintendent of schools at perry for years invited him up to coach the bulldogs and uh he and halibut came back to perry her hometown and he became the coach of the bulldogs and spent the next 40 years of his life here at Perry Gould. Not all that time coaching, right. but he was all all the time he was here, he was a, uh, the Bulldogs were his, even now, when he wasn't coaching. Now, Hazlip, that, that's Bill Blackshear's father-in-law, wasn't it? It was Hazlip. Hazlip. Hazlip, Ralph Hazlip. He, he yeah. was superintendent of schools here for years. Am, am I correct when I said that? Was that Bill Blackshear's father-in-law? I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who Bill married. I, I can't answer Christ, that. Well, his wife's name's Christy, but anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, since neither one of us know that, we'll leave that alone. Yeah. But yeah, uh, now is is this the picture of of uh, Coach Dale? That's a picture of Jack Dale when he when he uh, first went to college. Um, <clears throat> he. Uh, See if I can get that up there. There we go. See that picture, Coach Jack, Dale. Jack was an orphan when he was young. He ran away from the orphanage when he was like six, seven, eight years old and lived on the streets of Omaha. In fact, he lived in a piano crate in, uh, in an alley of Omaha. And uh, uh, from the alley of Omaha, he finally wound up with an uncle out in Gothenburg, Nebraska. And uh, he got tired of the life there. And when he was 14, he lied about his age and went to the Army. And he served three years in World War I and uh, was uh, discharged from the Army at the age of 17 after three years. And uh, 
the coach at, at Hastings College heard about this tough, tough kid from uh, from Gothenburg who set all these records while he was in the Army on the backpack five-mile track and and uh, the football team and, and other things that Jack did then. He was also a boxing champion in the Army. Uh, but Coach uh, Thompson at Hastings heard about him, and he went after Jack to bring him to Hastings to learn him how to play football. So the picture there on the front of the book is Jack's. Jack was like 18, 19 years old probably there. And it was at, at Hastings College in Hastings, Nebraska. And uh, and then uh, a year or so later, the University of Arkansas recruited Coach Thompson to come to Arkansas and coach. And Coach Thompson brought Jack with him to Arkansas. And when Jack got to Arkansas, I mean, he, uh, at around Fayetteville, he became a legend. I mean, the pranks, the dry sense of humor he had, he was in demand everywhere, especially around taverns and beer joints. <laughs> where he could get a little bit of a crowd and tell some of his stories. Jack was a well, well-respected and loved man because of his humor, and he never did mean things. And, you know, he didn't get out and get in fights and things like right. that. He was just uh, an entertainer and uh, in such a way that uh, it just he just captivated you. He would captivate you when he spoke, and he was a very good speaker. So he grew up just like a lot of young kids back in those eras i mean grew up rough oh he grew up rough. uh basically homeless yep uh tried to get food in his belly the best way he could he did he did and grew up uh became a man much earlier than he uh than most yeah he was out ahead of most people there yeah so uh and then probably had a desire to excel and be the best and that's what pushed him to he be won't. such a good athlete and a coach he always wanted something better for himself, and he wanted the same thing for his football players around Perigool. He was especially good to underdogs. If you were a kid from the other side of the town, or if you had an alcoholic parent, if you didn't have much of a chance, Jack wanted to help you. And uh, it was amazing. Uh, we could have an assembly back uh, when I was in high school, and the and that was in the old building there at Seventh and Court, and uh, the entire student body would be in that in that uh, assembly, and Jack Dale, if he happened to be speaking, and he did occasionally, uh, as soon as he walked to the to the podium, he would get a standing ovation. I mean, not a kid would be left in their seat. Everybody felt like they had something special with this coach because. He recognized, seemed to recognize everybody, either in the classroom, on the football field, in the gym, somewhere. He had a special thing going with all students. They all liked him and they loved him. And uh, that's what the book's about. Did uh, Do you think, or do you know of any coaches in today's time that uh, care that way about the underprivileged child or student athlete that maybe has that alcoholic parent or that uh, doesn't have enough money in their pocket to maybe, which I know schools furnish a lot of breakfasts, freeze breakfasts and lunches now, but still, do you know of any coaches out here that do those things? No, not really, not on a high school level, I sure don't. Uh, I know I went to a high school playoff game last night and uh, I walked in and the ticket price up there was posted on the uh, where, where the ticket takers were right. and I thought and it's for students the same price for students as it was for an, uh, an adult and I thought I wonder how many students there are out there listening to this game tonight because they just don't have six bucks to come see it they may have three brothers they bank it 24 bucks you think mm -hmm. and uh, so no I, I don't know that there's that many coaches or other people either in sports who are taking that much interest in in the uh and the down and you know the the kids that are being raised, they're not being raised uh, like they don't have parents. They have good loving parents, but they just can't afford everything that uh, maybe all the other kids do. And uh, as a result of that, they kind of get left out at times. Jack liked the kid that that looked like he might be getting left out of something. Well, I know this. I won't be writing the book about him, but. Uh 
couple of weeks ago, I had uh, Coach Larry Treadway on our show. He was my junior high football coach, and we've always remained good friends. He's now the head coach at uh, Walnut Ridge and the athletic director. Uh, but, you know, I think sometimes there's, there's certain coaches in your, in your life that – uh, do something or do some do some things for you or they want to give you the advantages uh, because they know what talents you have or whatever and you build those relationships and I know that's what you did with Coach Dale and it's what I've done over the years with Coach Treadway uh, so like I said, I won't be writing a book about him. He might shoot me if I wrote a book about him. You got to be careful if they're still living. Jack had been dead for several years, so I can say about anything I wanted to about him. <laughs> That's why I brought that up, because Treadway might disown me. Yeah. So uh, I even wrote a story in my book about a, a doctor that's still living, A.E. Andrews, down in Texarkana. And uh, Dale Hanks, who was the coach that followed Jack Dale here, he said, I don't know if I put his name in there or not. But I decided to go ahead and leave his name in there, Dr. A.E. Andrews. And he read the book, and and uh, he didn't have any problems with the story I writ wrote about him. And it was somewhat uh, uh, unethical, I would guess you'd say, what I wrote about him. But uh, it was the truth. Well, I'm going to have to really dig into this book now because <laughs> you, you've uh, shared with me, along with our, our viewers, uh, what I didn't know, but it's obviously going to have some funny stories in it, and and some uh, it's full of funny stories, and, and uh, some things that uh, uh, you might not want your eight-year-old knowing. <laughs> well, you got to be careful. The book is, uh, you know, it's I, when you write about a character like Jack Dale, you can't exclude everything that he said. Right. But at the same time, you know, you got to you got to tame it down just a little bit. He was probably. A, a little more vocal, a little more vain than what I, I made him out to be in the book because I, uh, I just didn't want to blow it up too bad. So did you take it from rated R and tweaked it down to PG-13? Uh, it might be a little above PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be pretty good. But, uh, <laughs> well, listen, our, uh, our time's running out, and uh, we hope you come back again. We want to promote your book. Oh, let me mention to our, our viewers that uh, you can pick this book up on Amazon.com, uh, you pulled that up earlier. Just do a search for Jack Dale. Yeah, just do a search on Amazon.com for Jack Dale or Gail, uh, or Gail Mag Spell by Mag. Gail Mag, and uh, you can Mag. you you can you can uh, pick that book up on Amazon. Where else around? Is there anywhere local? Lantern Bookstore carries the book. Lantern Bookstore carries and, it. And I think any bookstore you go into nowadays will order the book. Okay. If they don't have it in in stock, right. they will order it. So if you if you love biographies, if you love uh, football and football stories, then uh, go by and well, I'm gonna hold this up one more time, and that's what the cover of it looks like when you see it. Jack Dale, uh, the life and times of an unforbid unforgettable coach by Gail Mag. So go by and pick that up and uh, get you some good reading in. Thank you so much for coming you in bet. was a pleasure with us and uh we will uh keep promoting this book for you so we're going to take about a four minute break dave says and we'll be back uh at batten's bakery in uh, four minutes do you need insurance if the answer is yes let chris robinson and his staff at chris robinson's insurance agency handle your needs whether it's auto life business or planning for your retirement Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency is ready to serve you and your family. Come by Chris Robinson Insurance Agency, 1211 West Court Street in Paragould. You get big time savings. At First National Bank, you have convenience right at your fingertips. And instant buying power. It's so easy.
And when you're on the go, well, you know what to do. We understand the importance of now. First National Bank, the working bank for working people. When you feel bad and it's after regular office hours, turn to CR Doc. Here's Dr. Roger Cagle. At CR Doc, we offer more than the standard family medicine practice. We have extended office hours with on site lab and x ray, as well as casting and suturing capabilities, giving you an alternative to those crowded emergency rooms for all your minor injuries and accidents that need fast, complete medical attention. Appointments are available, but not necessary. CR Doc, in the King Carroll Suites on West Kings Highway in Peril Gold in front of Walmart. At CR Doc, we are patient people. Retirement? It's never looked so good. Welcome to Chateau on the Ridge Assisted Living in Paragould, Arkansas. Say hello to fine dining and down-home living, where around-the-clock security and peace of mind are always at your fingertips. And front-row seats to the best shows? They're included. Call it Chateau on the Ridge. You can call it home. Call or visit today to get the whole scoop. Mr. T's Riverside Cafe in Cardinal, Missouri for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Open seven days a week, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Join us after the game for a pizza or our delicious hickory smoked barbecue. Just a short drive across the Kahlua colored waters of the St. Francis River at the Arkansas Missouri State Line in the scenic resort town of Cardinal, Missouri. Mr. T's at Riverside. Kavanaugh Kia's pre owned superstore. Your one-stop car shop to find the vehicle you deserve. Every make and model is right here on our lot. Chevy, Ford, Toyota, Nissan, Lincoln, Cadillac, and more. With a huge selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. We also have a great variety of certified pre-owned Kias with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. You'll never have to drive anywhere else than Kavanaugh Kia's pre-owned superstore. Visit us today on Stadium Boulevard, just south of the bypass. Or online at KavanaughKia.com. We opened our maximum free checking account online. It took less than 15 minutes. With Focus Bank, you can easily open your maximum free checking or Max Savers account online. And with mobile banking, you'll always stay in control. Whether you're looking for a free checking account, an interest bearing account, or a rewards checking account, Focus Bank has a solution for you. Mobile banking with Focus Bank makes our life easier. Visit focusbank.com and sign up for a new account with mobile banking today. Hi, I'm Bill of Rock Lemon. And when I'm in Northeast Arkansas, when I watch sports, I watch all my sports on yourprimetimesports.com. You should too. I just knew you were going to start whistling over there. We're back on yourprimetimesports.com. I almost started spinning a basketball on my finger. Yeah, I don't think you can do that. I yes, can. I can. Do you have that ability? Do you have that skill set? Oh, well, yes, I do. I love messing with him. Because he messes can, with me all dribble, the I time. I dribble through my legs. I can run it around my neck. I really? I on my finger. Yes, really? Yes. Why yeah, aren't you I, playing for the Globetrotters right now, then? I'm not that good. Okay. I'm an amateur. Welcome back. Double G Sports Talk Saturday here on yourprimetimesports.com. Now, our next guest is a recorded interview. Before you go to this recorded interview, go ahead. You, you said you like to mess with me. Bruce and I were messing with you last night. There really was a wreck on the bridge, but I did find an exit to get through the ASU campus because that line was so long. You could see blue lights everywhere. Uh, on the and, way and, to uh, the and, game and, last and night. I, and I text you at Ridgefield Christian to let you know we were stuck on the bridge. So you were outside right. in the parking lot when you made that text? The second text, yes. We were walking in the door when you said bring your Verizon card in and I said I will if I can get off this bridge. We were you were in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we were in the parking lot. So Thanks. Bruce was cracking up. Okay. He says you're going to have Speaking hits. of Bruce, he may, be, he may be here shortly. If he's not I don't know, but we're, you know, going along with or without him this morning. Uh, Bruce has uh, been helping us out a lot lately. We appreciate Bruce Guthrie from the Paragool Daily Press and the uh, A-State Nation uh, for contributing to yourprimetimesports.com. We so, have uh, more and more people wanting to come on board. And Oh, the Richfield the, Christian people last night were oh, over the moon. I could not believe. That's the first time I've ever had that many people. From a school, walk up and say, "We appreciate so much that you're here." I have parents that live in Mississippi, or that live in. There was another state someone mentioned that never get to see their grandkids play, and they were already logging on and oh, ready yeah. to go. Yeah, yeah, and uh, of course they'll be able to watch it again 
as soon as I get it uploaded later on today, that game they can will watch be it on over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I was passing out cards they last night. They built us a box, a they did. broadcast box. They didn't have one. I called them yesterday because it was a short notice thing because we thought we were going to Brooklyn. That game fell through because Win was in the football playoffs. So I called him. I said, man, uh, we, we, we need a game to replace this game with. We haven't had CRA on yet this year, one of the teams we cover, and they're playing at your house, and we'd like to come broadcast that game. And they went into uh, uh, full force uh, um, activation mode to get us up and running in there. Edison, they built a great yeah. big broadcast box up at the top of the bleachers. Nice platform up there. It we was had our great. camera on it. We had uh, you and Bruce up there doing the play-by-play in the color. Uh, because of my sinuses, I don't even like being on right now, but because of my sinuses, I chose to run the camera last night. And a good, you know what? That may have been the best camera effort we've had uh, so far. We may just keep you on the camera. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay. uh, it's a stressful job. It is a, uh, d- yeah, it's a difficult job. Not for everyone. Uh, but you did a good job tonight. But thank you. But anyway, uh, yeah, Ridgefield. Man, we, we, we got to figure out a way to get back and do a couple more of their games. I've never seen a crowd of people that came up to us before the game, after the game. Uh, well, they're a tiny, tiny private school in a town that the other big schools overshadow them Constantly, Jonesboro, Nettleton, Valley View, West Side. You almost never hear about Ridgefield Christian they're, because they are so small and they are a private school. Yeah, they're a private Christian school. It's a good school. And uh, those people were excited. I just could not believe it. They're, they're kind of like CRI here in Paragool, mm-hmm. overshadowed uh, with the bigger schools. But, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty neat stuff. And uh, Nice gym. Yeah. Uh, you know, it was uh, for a school their size, it was a nice gym. So, um Anyway, I just, you know, just want to tip my cap to uh, the Ridgefield Christian folks. They treated us well. Yeah, we appreciate them. We'll we'll try and come back and see them sometime. Maybe uh, maybe in spring sports or something. They play baseball, don't they? I believe they do. I think they have all. Yeah. Sport, yes. We'll we'll see about going to see them again. Um, now. But next year, you need to figure out a way to do a couple of their games. I will. Two or three of their. I games. will. And if we have another situation arise, uh, like we'd had last night, where our game is canceled for some reason, the game we had scheduled. We'll, right. well, that'll be one of the ones we look on the list to see if we can go there. Yeah. So, now, um, this week, earlier this week, I got to uh, add another legend to our Legends list in the Legends series here on yourprimetimesports.com, and I got to drive over to the other side of Memphis over in Collierville to sit down and visit with the most famous fisherman ever bill dance now i want to say this before we go to the interview my cameraman and i david dupuis went over there set everything up in his television studio oh it's awesome he's got a show on the nbc sports network and he's also going to have that show or or a show similar to it next year after the first of the year on the outdoor channel as well and he shoots the studio stuff right there where we were uh this week now, we all had it all set up. We had the cordless mics. We were using the cordless mics, and everything was rocking along. And about midway through the interview, something around us, whether it was in his studio or just outside or something, began to interfere with his cordless mic. So you will hear about halfway through the interview, you'll start to hear a little bit of static on Bill's mic. I cleaned it up the best I could. It still exists on the recording. And uh, it's uh, in some places it's not that prevalent, and in a couple of places you hear it pretty good. So I'm giving you that disclaimer before we go into the interview that, yes, there is static in this thing. We so the whole second half has got static in it's it? It's got static in it. We didn't have headphones on, so we were holding cordless mics. We had no way of knowing that it was happening. And I got home and started uh, doing the uh, editing of the interview, and that's when I discovered that we had that problem we didn't know we had at Why the time. Why don't you guys wear these headsets and eliminate that? Because the guys uh, that we interview for this particular segment, the legend segment, they don't want to wear the headsets. They don't want. They don't want to. Uh, I, one of us could, I guess, wear a headset and give them a cordless mic, and then we would know when something like that's going on. But you're, you're sidetracking me. We're gonna fix that problem in the future. This. Well, I'm not, well, I'm not sidetracking we, you. We, 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 <laughs> this particular interview will have a little bit of uh, audio technical difficulties. Uh, starting about halfway through the interview and intermittent through the rest of the way. Nothing I can do about it. Cleaned it up the best I could. Hope you enjoy it anyway. Here is my conversation with Bill Dance. 
As a boy in Tennessee, Bill Dance loved to fish, and by the mid-1960s, his angling skills were creating a sensation in local circles. When Ray Scott began searching for 100 top-notch anglers to participate in his first bass tournament, Bill's name kept popping up. Dance fished that 1967 tournament, the All-American Bass Invitational, and within two minutes of lines in the water, he had caught the first bass in the first ever bass tournament. This was the dawning of professional bass fishing and Bill Dance's dominance of the BASS tournament trail. In the 14 years he fished the tour, Bill set many records. He won 23 national titles. Of 78 total BASS entries, he finished in the money 64 times. In 1968, he won three events. In 1969, he won two, and the first of three Angler of the Year titles. The sport of bass fishing was less than a decade old, but Bill Dan was already a legend. In 1970, Bill became a full-time professional, teaching seminars and entertaining vendors for plastic worm innovator Nick Cream. He was also busy putting together, almost single-handedly, his television show, Bill Dance Outdoors, which he launched in 1968. Bill was a natural on TV. His love of the sport and his irrefutable skills were unmistakable, and the program was an immediate success. Thirty-eight years and two thousand shows later, Bill, in his jeans, sneakers, polo shirt, sunglasses, and trademark University of Tennessee baseball cap, is one of fishing's most recognizable icons. He's continued to share his knowledge in seven books, articles in major outdoor magazines, and more than thirty-six videos, including three popular blooper shows. Bill is an idol to millions of anglers, the perfect fishing buddy. <laughs> Yeah. Golly, broke my back and my leg, and now I broke my rod. Oh. He's been described as offbeat, humble, and charming, as good with people as he is with fish. He'll tell you that fishing has been his life, that it's afforded him the opportunity to meet the greatest people, other fishermen. He'll tell you that fishing is a spiritual thing that brings the people who do it closer together. And he'll also tell you that his biggest thrill was being present when all of his children caught their first fish. For his unprecedented achievements, his remarkable aptitude for education and entertainment, and for the passion and enthusiasm he continues to share as one of sport fishing's most outstanding ambassadors, IGFA salutes Bill Dance. Folks, I love my job. This Legend series is taking me all over to talk to folks that I grew up watching and idolizing, and I've got another one here on your primetime sports today. This is Bill Dance. I cannot believe you agreed to this. We we're just flabbergasted. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm happy as a rabbit in the lettuce fish to be here with you. I'm so glad you came on. We, uh, I've got a lot of stuff I want to ask you. Well, uh, far away. Okay, I was... well, I mean, we were doing research, and I found at least – four different halls of fame that you have been inducted to am i wrong or is there more uh i think there's there's several uh four halls of fame yeah. in fact i want to bring that up so i can quote those off you're a member of the international game fish associations hall of fame that's probably the most prestigious okay uh, you're you're a member of the national freshwater right. hall of fame right the bass fishing hall of fame right and the tennessee sports hall of fame right that may be a record. I don't know of any athlete in any sport that has ever been inducted into that many Hall of Fames, one person. Well, if you've been around 100 years, it's not too hard. <laughs> 100 years. Now, you're not that old. I mean, I, I mean, I grew up watching you. David, my cameraman, grew up watching you. Tons of people have grown up watching you, but you haven't. 1960, what was it that it said on there? Well, was we, your first tournament? Well, we started uh, outdoor television back in 1968 on right. uh, uh, ABC affiliate here locally in, in the Memphis market uh, on WHBQ. Uh, and then, you know, that rocked along for quite a while. And then we uh, picked up uh, one of their sister stations uh, uh, down in Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, and then another sister station, uh, WBRZ in Baton Rouge, uh, Channel 2. And then a station up in Paducah, Kentucky, another ABC affiliate, uh, said, hey, you mind doing one for us? And I said, no. 
So I was doing four markets, 52 weeks a year, uh, 208 shows a year. So were you doing different shows for the different now, channels? Or yeah, you... they, they were the same video. Or actually, it was filmed back then, 16 millimeter. Um, I would go into uh, Paducah, and I'd take four shows. And while I was up there, I might shoot a show at Real Foot, and then I might run over to Kentucky Lake and do something. And then I'd come back home, and uh, I'd take four shows while I was there. J.C. Penney was in the sporting goods. They had sporting goods in their stores at that time, and J.C. Penney was a sponsor at that time. And then I'd come back to Memphis and had a big discount store in the Memphis area, fabulous surplus city. And it was a big discount chain. And then down in Jackson, I had a big uh, sporting good outfit uh, that was a sponsor. And then I, when I'd go to Jackson, I'd do Memphis every week. I'd run to Jackson. And Jackson was kind of a, uh, it was a blessing because it was the state capital. Uh, the governor was a big fisherman. Uh, Billy Joe Cross was our uh, the commissioner, game and fish. And boating commissioners were there. And I could pull guests. And I would go there and do tape four shows at uh, the local station there. And I would take video from Ross Barnett and over on the Mississippi River, you know, like show, Lake Show One and at Lake Lee, Lake Washington. Up and lots of different lakes oh, down yeah, there I had to a pick lot of stuff from. To yeah. Pull from. And then I would boogie it on down to uh, down to Channel Two down at Baton Rouge, WBRZ. And of course, that was a capital. And I had a lot of people there with the game and fish that I knew, and I could pull guests from there. And then I'd run on maybe down to the Gulf and uh, do stuff there. So I had a lot to pull from, and I would show uh, tapes or shows from, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, the Memphis area, up around Kentucky, up on the Mississippi, real foot, Kentucky Lake, and then I would intermix it. But I was doing like, as I said, you know, four shows a week, 52 weeks a year, 208 shows a year. And I mean, that, I was just passing myself. And then, and still trying to compete in the tournaments, and all this while you were you were fishing in professional, the very first professional bass tournament. All that was going on, you know, back in the late sixties and the early seventies, and finally, uh, we syndicated Bill Dance Outdoors into fifty, and then to ninety network markets, and that kind of eased it up a little bit. Shoot one show and send it to everybody. Right. Yeah. And uh, and then that rocked along for a period of time. And then the cost of syndication just skyrocketed. Right. And cable was coming on. So then we moved Bill Dance Outdoors to ESPN. Well, ESPN, the demographics just, it was a great network, and it still is. But the demographics just weren't there. We hit the household, you know, New York, uh, Philadelphia, Chicago, uh, Denver, you know, Spokane. And they were watching it in those big cities. They well, were. yeah, we, we, well, we hit it, you know, from Los Angeles to Dallas to Phoenix to uh, all the way to Miami, up the eastern seaboard. We hit all the major network, the major markets, but the demographics just weren't there. And then TNN, the Nashville Network. Which is now Spike TV. Right. Right. Popped up, and we picked up some major sponsors. We picked up Chevrolet. We picked up Walmart. We hit that perfect niche, that perfect demographic. Exact target audience. Right. Country Western music, bull riding, NASCAR, and Country Western, you know, just perfect. A lot of those entertainers, they, they were hunters. They were fishermen. And uh, we just hit a, the perfect niche, the perfect demographics. And so we moved Bill Dance from ESPN over to TNN and for 15 years. And that's where we ran for a long, long time. Then... Viacom bought them out, moved them to New York. The Gaylord Enterprises, just that whole network kind of just kind of went away. Uh, then we moved to OLN, the Outdoor Life Network. Which is uh, not really widely carried like the, on well, cable then, networks and stuff. You know, then it was, and then it changed to Versus. Right. And then NBC Sports bought them out, which is now NBC Sports. Which is where you are now, right? Right. Is that right? With Freshwater. See, our freshwater, we do 26 fresh, original freshwater shows on NBC Sports. And then we do uh, 13 saltwater shows for NBC Sports. Well, next year we're going back to the Outdoor Channel with our saltwater series. So 13 original shows on the Outdoor Channel uh, in saltwater. And we'll continue with 26 original freshwater shows on NBC Sports. So we'll be doing 39 
original shows, and that's a ton We're of We're going to have to jockey to get on one of these shows with him. I would love to go fishing with you sometime. We well, gotta, I'll tell you what. See if we can work that out. <laughs> we go. I mean, we go, go, go. I tell you, we just got back from a two-week shoot in Florida, and so we're scheduling another shoot uh, probably in the next week or so. So you've been on television continuously since 1968. Yeah. Not a, not a year in there. Did you take a break or, Late or not? Late 60, 69. For 46 years, we've been doing that is uh, amazing. Bill Dance Outdoors. That is for amazing. For a long, long time. But when you were a kid, you didn't say when you were a kid, I want to be on TV when I grow up. When you were a kid, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to fish. And, I, and my mother used to say, you're never going to mount to anything but a river rat. And, uh, you know, I was so fortunate that... Uh, I had a daddy and a granddaddy that introduced me to this sport, and uh, they gave me the most wonderful gift of all, and that was, you know, teaching me how to fish. And uh, I never dreamed that uh, I could turn a hobby into a profession. Uh, the bass tournaments that came along in uh, the late 60s, it all started over at Beaver Lake uh, near Springdale, Arkansas. Right. Great lake. Big yeah. old huge striper lake. Right. And uh, I participated in that tournament, the very first one. And uh, as luck would have it, I led that tournament for the first two days and uh, I finished second in that tournament. A good buddy of mine, Stan Sloan, uh, the late Stan Sloan, who started uh, uh, Zorro Bait Company. I don't know if you remember that bait company. But I, I, vaguely, yeah. Yeah, he was a great, great guy. And... Uh, he started that bait company, and then uh, he won that tournament. And then right after that, uh, there was another tournament up on Kentucky Lake, and I participated in that and finished second in that. And then uh, Ray Scott had another tournament at Smith Lake near Jasper, Alabama, and I participated in it. You just got around. Well, I did. All the different tournaments they had, you were there. Well, I was the first three, and then I, I had three seconds. And then I got a call from uh, a bait company, head and tackle company, which made all the old-timey baits and Lucky 13s and the, the Zero Spooks and the, yeah. all the old-timey baits to go to work for them. And another company in Tyler, Texas, Cream Lure Company, the originators of the plastic worm. You, you made them famous. Well, they, well, they, they made the, the, they were the originators. And so I was, 50% of the fish I was catching back then were on plastic worms. And so Diane and I went to Tyler, Texas and stayed with Nick and Cosma Cream for three days. And he offered me a job to go to work for him, to travel and fish with buyers and con compete in the tournaments and do promotions. And I thought, my goodness, this is what I've always wanted to do. It was a dream come true. And that, that started, uh, started well, my career. Competitive fishing wasn't really prevalent, if at all, when you first started. Were there any competitions of, in fishing of any kind before you actually got oh, into yeah, it? Oh, yeah, there, there were some tournaments that had been held, uh, World Series of tournaments. Uh, Virgil Ward had competed in some tournaments of uh, chicken chip fishing. Virgil was doing a show out of Missouri. And, uh, and another fellow from uh, uh, southern Missouri, Glenn Andrews, uh, had competed in some earlier tournaments. But they didn't have the, the recognition that Ray Scott had when he started BASS, that had uh, just a tremendous impact on the industry, and it just continued to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and look at where it is today. Well, when you were younger, before you jumped into competitive fishing, were you watching those? No, 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 no. Did, were, did, do you have any I, idea? I didn't, even what, I didn't even know what a tournament really was. And then when I got an invitation to compete in that first tournament, you know, uh, I got a call. You had been invited to participate in the uh, uh, spring or the Beaver Lake Invitational Tournament and uh, and I went to my boss and I said look I've got an invitation to participate in a big fishing tournament and he said uh, and I was a jobber salesman working for a, a distributor here in Memphis and he said uh, well your sales are up uh, I'll let you go so he let me go to that particular event. His decision changed your life. Well, you know, it was funny. I got a call from a guy by the name of Oscar Oakley. You've probably never heard of him. He owned Hull Dobbs Ford, and Hull Dobbs was the single biggest Ford dealer in the United States. Today, it's you've heard of Oakley Ford. I have. Yeah. Okay. 
Oscar Oakley owned Bull Dobbs, and that was the biggest single Ford dealer in the United States. And he called me, and he said, uh, hello, Bill, Oscar Oakley. Huh? How are you, Mr. Oakley? <laughs> he said, uh, I own and president of Hold Ops Ford. And I went, I knew who that was. Yeah. He said, I'd like for you to come over to my office uh, and when your convenience. And I said, sure. So I went by his office and I walked in and the carpet was about that thick. And he had a big burl looking walnut desk that a, a racehorse couldn't jump over. And I walked up and he said, have a seat. He said, I understand there's going to be a big tournament over in Northwest Arkansas. Henry Reynolds, our outdoor editor at that time, Commercial Appeal, had been writing a lot about it. And I said, yes. And he said, I'd like to sponsor you in that event. And I said, sponsor me? He's me. He said, I'd like to pay your entry fee in that event and all your expenses. And I said, well, I certainly do appreciate it. And uh, so he sponsored me in that first event, paid all my expenses, my entry fee and everything. And I finished, like I say, I finished second. First place was 2000 Second place was the thousand. Well, I came back and went to his office and came back and he wouldn't accept it. And he said, the next event, I'll sponsor you in that. And uh, so he did. And the third event, he called me again and said, I want to sponsor you. By the third time, I was taking my mind up. But Oscar Oakley really kind of helped kickstart it along with uh, the support I got. Had, how, had he, how had he heard of you well, prior been, to? I, well, it had been articles that I'd been newspaper locally. It had been Henry Reynolds, our outdoor editor, had been writing articles and things. And so you got his attention. Yeah. 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 Wow. So it all, everything, just. Uh, just a sequence of events that happened. Absolutely. That have, that, that all happened right there very close together. Absolutely. That have led you to where oh, you yeah. are today. Oh, that's yeah. That's amazing. And, just, you know, associating myself with people a whole lot smarter than me and working with people that were a whole lot smarter than me, that's been my success, you know. You're only as good as the people that you work with. You, know? you also have to have the talent, and you know how to catch fish. Well, sometimes I wonder, you know, but I think experience <laughs> is the greatest teacher in the world. The more you do of any one thing, and if you've got the desire and the determination, uh, it, you know, that goes a long way. But, you know, I don't care how determined you are. You're not going to be successful every time. You know, I think, and I know you love sports because you're into it. If you'll remember, one of the greatest football coaches of all times was Vince Lombardi, who coached the Green Bay Packers years and years ago. He was a sensational coach. And he used to pound it into his players. One thing, he'd tell them over and over and over again. He said, winning is achieved through determination. And he'd tell them that every day, every day through the season. What did I tell you yesterday? Winning is achieved through determination, coach. What did I tell you yesterday? Winning is achieved through determination. He preached that. And, you know, and, and that's, a, that's a good thing to believe. Winning is achieved. But, you know, when you compete against Mother Nature and her, creature, and her creatures, I don't care how determined you are, you are not going to win every time. You, you and I compete against each other is one thing. But when you compete against another living creature that you can't see, uh, it's a whole different, different ball game. Yeah. And uh, it, that's where the word challenge comes in. You can be determined. I don't care how determined you are. You're not going to win every time when you compete against Mother Nature. Uh, there's so many elements that, that blend in. And I think that's the way the good Lord intended it to be. There's days you're going to win. There's days they're going to win. And more times than not, they're going to win. I don't care how much you know about it and how experienced you are, you're not going to win every time. And I've, you know, I've done this a long, long time. And I've learned a lot about the habits and the habitats of fish. I've gained a lot of experience. I've learned a lot about summer, fall, winter, spring, cold water, hot water, muddy water, clear water. I've learned how to fish top. I've learned how to fish 60, 70 feet of water. But I still cannot win every time I go. I just can't do it. Do I get skunked? Yeah, I get skunked. Are you still learning stuff Sure. Today? The day I quit, the day I'm going to hang up. I'm going to hang it up. I don't catch fish every time I go. And if somebody tells you they do, hey, they got their fingers <laughs> crossed because they don't catch them. You just can't win every time. I don't care how determined you are and how experienced you are. When you compete against Mother Nature and her creatures, she, there's too many elements to compete too, with. Too, too many variables. Absolutely. Know. 
We're going to take our uh, first break and come back with more. I'm having a blast here on yourprimetimesports.com with the legend, Bill Dance. We'll be right back. You get big time savings and hometown service. Retirement? It's never looked so good. Welcome to Chateau on the Ridge Assisted Living in Paragould, Arkansas. Say hello to fine dining and down-home living, where around-the-clock security and peace of mind are always at your fingertips. And front row seats to the best shows? They're included. We call it Chateau on the Ridge. You can call Make it home. Switch now to call North or visit Beijing. today to get the First National whole Bank provides scoot. me with totally free checking. And as a business owner, that helps keep my customers satisfied. At First National, there are no fees and no hassles. Express yourself by choosing a debit card that fits your personality. I switched my bank to First National because of no monthly debit card fees. Are you ready to switch? First National Bank, the working bank for working people. Member FDIC. Let us show you how easy switching can be. Do you need insurance? If the answer is yes, let Chris Robinson and his staff at Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency handle your needs. Whether it's auto, life, business, or planning for your retirement, Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency is ready to serve you and your family. Come by Chris Robinson Insurance Agency, 1211 West Court Street in Paragould. Good gravy, look at here. That is a mew, my boy. That right there is a monster. Where are you going? Look at size. Golly, look at size that thing. Oh, there you go. Golly! Look at the side. Ooh, this thing. Here he comes. God! Let me just touch you. That's all I want. So big, he can't even move. Come on in here. Easy, easy, easy. Yes, sir. Golly. Oh, you got it, didn't you? I'm nervous. All right. Ball ball. See you. Yeah. Special times. Yep. That was from the 90s. That was on your show. And that made me think of a question that I wanted to ask you because that was a 13 pound bass but that's not even close to the biggest freshwater fish you've ever caught because there's some huge monster catfish out there in the world and you just recently caught some of them what's the biggest one you ever caught well you know we had a phenomenal year on the Mississippi River this year as a result of low water and uh, a lot of guys did uh, a lot of fishermen out of Memphis fishing north and south of the uh, of Memphis and even guys on up toward uh, Osceola, Arkansas and southern Missouri. But uh, I think the reason that uh, this year was such a great year on the river uh, is the fact that we did have low water. And the Mississippi is just a tremendous fishery. Uh, I, caught, uh, I caught three of my biggest this year and I caught them all in September. Uh, I had a 73, uh, a, no, a 75, an 83, and I caught 110. And uh, 
the 110 uh, missed the Tennessee State record by a couple of pounds. 110. Is that the biggest one you ever caught? Oh, right yeah, there? 110 and a quarter. And that was the – it was. A, and that was this year? Yeah. You caught the biggest fish in freshwater you've ever caught in your entire life mm-hmm. in the year 2012. Right. That is amazing. That yeah. is fantastic. It's yeah, been it well. It's been a wild year on the Mississippi River with it going up and down so much. Yeah, we've had a we've had an extremely low river, and uh, barge barge traffic's had a fit on the river trying to maneuver up, you know, north and south on the river. And of course, we've had a tiny river this year, and I think that's contributed a lot to it. And it's con, it's confined the bait fish to certain areas, and uh, we've had slow currents, and uh, it's enabled the fishermen to uh, it's confined the fish, although. Even with low water, there's still no guarantee the fish are going to bite. But uh, if you stay at it long enough, uh, you can catch fish. Both of the biggest fish I caught, you would think it would have been in extremely deep water. But uh, uh, both of these fish came out of, uh, one was 42. The two biggest were 42, and the 75 came out of 46 feet of water. In fact, even at 58-degree water, which the river is now, a uh, good buddy of mine from over at Brighton, we fished uh, Saturday and all that wind. And uh, uh, Roger Willie, uh, we caught a he caught a 52 and a 46. So they're still biting. That's, that's amazing. What about salt water? What's the biggest fish you ever caught in salt water? Uh, the biggest salt water is uh, let me see. Uh, I want to say t- 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 about 185, and that was a grouper. 185 pound grouper. Mm-hmm. Where, whereabouts were you? We were off Marco Island, uh, fishing with. Uh, Good buddy Roland Martin and uh, Johnny Mars, founder of Bass Pro Shop. Uh, that's I, just, I wouldn't know what to do. And that's really not that big for a grouper. I wouldn't uh, know what to do if I had a fish that was even more than 20 pounds on the end. Of, I've never caught anything bigger than 15 pounds ever. Just hang on. Just hang on. That's, yep. Just hang on. We catch. We go out. David and I go out catching these. Um, <clears throat> they're, they call them grinnels. Yeah, great. They're, they're both in. Yeah, is both what they in. are. Counterfeit and bass. They, they, exactly. Yeah. They, they, they look like a, or, or a trout even. They look sort of like a trout. Um, and they get huge and they fight and they're worthless fish. They're absolutely worthless fish, but they fight like you would never believe. Well, see, you know, we get hung up with, uh, we, we, we have psychological hang ups. We fish for the fun of catching fish and the fight, you know, the, the fight of a fish. You know, when the, when the bout's over, you say, oh, I tell you what, that was fun. You know, sure, a lot of us eat fish, a lot of us throw fish back, but there's a lot of good edible fish. You know, a crappie is really not a, a real fighter. He doesn't just give us a good fight, you know, he, but he's, he's he, fried crappie. there you go, yeah, there you go. He's great table fare. Yeah. But now, Grenell will drown a crappie as far as you hook them tail to tail. A Grenell will give you a great fight. But the fun of fighting, the fun of catching a grunt is a lot of fun to catch him. Sure. But we have psychological hang-ups. We said, ah, yeah, but you can't eat him. But the, you had a lot of you fun catching him. a lot of fun him. catching that That's thing. right. We do. We that's go right. out to the uh, St. Francis River. That's right. And uh, that thing's loaded with those things. And oh, they're surfacing all the time. And you just, just barely put a little uh, white grub in front of them, and they'll attack that thing. Yeah, you go to the Tennessee River, and you catch these big drum. And they will fight you. They will give you more three-minute rounds. And when the bout's over, you'll scratch your head and say, well, who won the fight? But <laughs> it's like eating a log jam rat. You wouldn't eat one. But the fun of actually catching him, I mean, it's just a lot of fun to catch one. It's like a big tarpon. A tarpon in salt water, they're, they're, you don't eat them. Right. But they're just so much fun to catch. So a lot of fish, in freshwater especially, uh, it, we just have psychological hang-ups. If they're not edible, ah. Uh, they're trash fish, exactly. but they're yeah. still fun to catch, you know. Do you eat a lot of fish? Yeah, I like fish. I like uh, uh, I like crappie, fried crappie. I eat a lot of, you know, and I like catfish. I go in restaurants a lot of times. That's the first thing I'll eat, you know, fried catfish. Fish is all I, day and all night, and he goes and to love tuna, tuna and fish. orders fish. And I love tuna fish sandwiches. That's, that's uh, you know, I, you would think that you'd get tired of fish after a while. Yeah, but you don't. You you like. I throw back a lot of fish, but sure. I keep I keep some fish. Now, the fishermen that are pro fishermen today, out there on the tour today, are there any of them that really impress you that you you say that guy's going somewhere? Well, there's yeah, there's a lot of them that are that uh, extremely good. They're very versatile fishermen. Uh, they know a lot about the habits and the habitats of the fish that they're after. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of good fishermen on them today. I mean, extremely good fishermen. Do you ever wish you were still out there competitive fishing on the tour at all? I'm competitive even today, 
I haven't learned. I mean, haven't I? Didn't lost what I what I learned from competing. Uh, I'm still very competitive. You know, we as a human race, we're all competitive. Uh, whether we compete in a tournament, uh, if you and I are sitting, if we're just sitting there watching a ball game, uh, if Arkansas is playing Tennessee, you, you, you're pulling for the Razorbacks. <laughs> I'm pulling for the Volunteers. Right. And uh, we're, we're competitive. Uh, uh, you know, you say, hey, I'm going to bet you right now, I bet you a Coca-Cola, he, they miss his field goal. All right, I'll take you. I bet he, I bet he makes a field goal. It, if, you, if you play golf, you're competitive. If you sell insurance, you want to be the top salesman of the month. If you sell cars, you want to make, you want to make the, the, the you, know, you want to be the top salesman of the month. If, if you drive to work, you play little mental games with yourself. You, you said, oh, yesterday I made nine traffic lights. I'm going to see if I can make ten today. <laughs> I mean, we play mental games. We're just, by nature, we are just competitive. And we're the same way when we fish. Whether we fish uh, just one-on-one, -on -one, we're, we're trying to compete. We're competing. Uh, whether we compete in tournaments, we compete. Whether we play golf, we're trying to in a foursome or, or I don't know anything about golf but me neither I don't either I, I think they used it the only reason they named it golf because they used up all, all the other four all letter other words names. yeah all but, the other four letter words <laughs> but but, but uh, we're just a, we're competitive uh, there are some good fishermen out there today I mean exceptionally good fishermen that can fish as I said you know throughout the seasons through, through all kind of conditions they can fish Lakes, they can fish moving water, they can fish shallow, they can fish deep, they can adapt. Uh, they're very experienced. But even then, they're not successful 100% of the time. You take like Kevin, Kevin, for instance. Kevin is an exceptionally good fisherman. Kevin Van Dam. Right. Kevin Van, Kevin's an exceptionally good fisherman. But he's not successful every time. I know uh, down at Shreveport, a uh, uh, year or so ago, he came walking in. I was standing there by the elevator, and he just had his head down. And I said, you're going to have those days, Kevin. He said, he just shook his head, and he just bombed out. And I said, I've been there, done that. And he said, makes you feel bad, doesn't it? I said, sure, it makes you feel bad. But I said, you keep competing. You, you know, you've got to accept defeat if you compete. And you're not going to be successful every time you do it. And I said, you're too good, and you'll come back. And he did. He came right back. So you just, uh, uh, you're going to have good times, you're going to have bad times. But... Kevin's an exceptionally good fisherman. He's uh, he's, the, he's the number one name right yep. now, the name that most yep. people recognize. He's exceptionally good. He's very, very good at, at what he does. Tell the folks where they can find your show one more time. NBC Sports Network that used to be Versus Network. Right, we're on. On satellite, on Dish Network and Direct TV, I guess. Right, and we're on. some cable systems. Right. You can catch us on NBC Sports uh, on Saturdays and Sundays. And then uh, right after the first of the year, you'll catch us uh, on NBC Sports from Freshwater. And the outdoor channel, which we do have in in our neck of the woods, we do get the outdoor channel. So we're going to get we don't get the NBC Sports Channel where we live uh, on the cable system, but we do have the outdoor channel. Right. So we'll get to see you on TV. If you again. get direct, you get, you can get NBC. And, yeah, uh, we got cable. Yeah, yeah. You got cable. I got cable. Right. Well, we got we can get the outdoor channel. And we'll get to see you again. And I'm Good glad to see you today. Thank Good you to be so with you, much. Partner. Thank you so much. And we're going to go fishing with you someday. I I'd swear we're going to come find you and go fishing with you. Uh, this is uh, Bill Dance. And I'm Dave Grimm on your primetime sports. Do you need insurance? If the answer is yes, let Chris Robinson and his staff at Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency handle your needs. Whether it's auto, life, business, or planning for your retirement, Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency is ready to serve you and your family. Come by Chris Robinson Insurance Agency. 1211 West Court Street in Paragould. You get big time savings and hometown service. Always a big Dodge Chrysler Jeep and Ram. And there, there's a difference you will clearly see. You're always a VIP. At First National Bank, you have convenience right at your fingertips. And instant buying power. It's so easy.
And when you're on the go, well, you know what to do. We understand the importance of now. First National Bank, the working bank for working people. When you feel bad and it's after regular office hours, turn to CR Doc. Here's Dr. Roger Cagle. At CR Doc, we offer more than the standard family medicine practice. We have extended office hours with on site lab and x ray, as well as casting and suturing capabilities, giving you an alternative to those crowded emergency rooms for all your minor injuries and accidents that need fast, complete medical attention. Appointments are available, but not necessary. CR Doc, in the King Carroll Suites on West Kings Highway in Paragold in front of Walmart. At CR Doc, we are patient people. Retirement? It's never looked so good. Welcome to Chateau on the Ridge Assisted Living in Paragould, Arkansas. Say hello to fine dining and down-home living, where around-the-clock security and peace of mind are always at your fingertips. And front-row seats to the best shows? They're included. We call it Chateau on the Ridge. You can call it home. Call or visit today to get the whole scoop. Mr. T's Riverside Cafe in Cargill, Missouri for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Open seven days a week, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Join us after the game for a pizza or our delicious hickory smoked barbecue. Just a short drive across the Kahlua-colored waters of the St. Francis River at the Arkansas-Missouri State Line in the scenic resort town of Cardinal, Missouri. Mr. T's at Riverside. Kavanaugh Kia's pre-owned superstore. Your one-stop car shop to find the vehicle you deserve. Every make and model is right here on our lot. Chevy, Ford, Toyota, Nissan, Lincoln, Cadillac, and more. With a huge selection of cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs. We also have a great variety of certified pre-owned Kias with America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. You'll never have to drive anywhere else than Kavanaugh Kia's pre-owned superstore. Visit us today on Stadium Boulevard, just south of the bypass. Or online at KavanaughKia.com. We opened our maximum free checking account online. It took less than 15 minutes. With Focus Bank, you can easily open your maximum free checking or Max Savers account online. And with mobile banking, you'll always stay in control. Whether you're looking for a free checking account, an interest bearing account, or a rewards checking account, Focus Bank has a solution for you. Mobile banking with Focus Bank makes our life easier. Visit FocusBank.com and sign up for a new account with mobile banking today. Hi, I'm Middle Rock Lemon. And when I'm in Northeast Arkansas, when I watch sports, I watch all my sports on yourprimetimesports.com. You should too. And welcome uh, back. Beautiful promo like there, buddy. That? I love that. We, we're going to get more of those, too. I should have got one from Bill Dance, and I did not think about it at the time. We were having, uh, well, we were having issues, as you saw, right. uh, those those microphone issues. But it worked out okay. Hope you enjoyed the interview with uh, Bill Dance, part three, or episode three of our Legend series. Next week, our legend will be Larry Lacewell. Is it going to be here? Coach. He's coming is, is here live. He's coming here live yeah. Saturday. Yep. I'm going to be here. He if be I don't, here. look, you don't even have to sit me in this seat. Just let me sit and watch Larry We're going to have him on right about 10 o'clock, and he's going to finish the show out with us uh, next Saturday right here at Batten's Donuts and Bakery. And of course, we had Dick Clay in here last week live. Which I missed. Yeah. You did not tell me about. I was really, it was kind of hectic. This job is hectic, man. Sometimes but, you know, between this and the karaoke gigs I do, I'm I I, I well, I'm like Bill Dance. I'm you're, my, you're, I meet myself in the road. You you are actually a renaissance man. Is, is what I like to call you. Where you just I mean you do everything, man. Yeah. I mean you just your talents are many. Okay. And your opportunities enough. are few. Enough, enough. This is uh, Bruce <laughs> Guthrie from the uh, Paragould Daily Press, also from A State Nation. I guess yes. it's astatenation.com, is that right? Some, yes, yes. And uh, they do some broadcasting and, and print work on the Internet, and they, they're on talk shows. They got, there's a, there is a talk show. It's A State Nation uh, on 95.3, the ticket from 11 to 1 with James Bryant and Randy Myers. That's the, that's the, uh, the, the KNEA FM station. That's is correct. That correct. Yes, it's on 95.3. And 970 on AM? 970 AM. Yeah, yes. It's been 970 AM forever. Ever, Now right. they have an FM station. Right. So Thanks he, to Clear Channel's buyout or, or sell-off of those of that cluster group, EAB swept in the East Arkansas broadcasters. Good, swept in and brought. Move, yeah. Right, they swept in and got K-Fine, the Wolf, 
ninety-five point three. They've got several, several up and down the dial. So there's two, yeah. There's two major uh, radio conglomerations in Jonesboro, uh, the Jonesboro Radio Group and right. the EAB, and uh, and you take part in the uh, EAB broadcast. Yes, a lot of the time. every once in a while, yes, I get a chance to go sit in with those guys. And this is the third time we've had you on Double G. And you, yes, you just start to become a regular member of the Your Prime Time Sports family as well. Well, you know, it could go Triple G if uh, if, if, if things could, if could go thing, right. You know what? We may do that if you end up working with us on a regular basis right, right and coming on the Saturday morning talk show on a regular basis we will in fact have to change the name from Dude, double G to triple G it may be and that's a, that's a good move for you and and it just happens to work out that way we got Grim Garmouth Guthrie right right Triple G Sports Talk Saturday. I think that's a good move. I, I really, I think that's a good move. Clifton is watching right now. That's good, Clifton. That's a good move, man. <laughs> that's a good move. Clifton uh, uh, had other things to take care of this morning. He was in with me for the first hour, right? And uh, he is now off and running down the road. So now I've got. You want to talk about here. a guy who, who who does some work? That guy, yeah, does he, some work. He gets around. He gets around. He does the photography. He does this. He does his his main day job. And, right. And. Uh, Plus, he's got a magazine that he's, he's trying to put out, too, I mean, which is is coming, it's, the yeah, basketball right edition. Right around Thanksgiving time is the uh, basketball edition of the Your Primetime Sports magazine. That's it. So, uh, you were with us last night. Yes, I was. CR, uh, I'm sorry, at Little Rock. Uh, why did I say Little Rock? Why are you? What, what? Ridgefield Christian. I tried Ridgefield to say, Christian. I tried to say school. Little Rock Christian. Yes. Because that's a school also. Yes, it is. Ridgefield Christian. You Nowhere near here, us. though. You did the, uh, the Color For Me on the broadcast last night. Yes. And... And that was the second night in a row that you had covered a Crowley's Ridge Academy basketball game. Yes, so it was. So you're getting pretty well versed with that team. Uh, it's it's been a, a heavy dose in a very short period of time. And so now they are two and four on the season. Right. That was their first conference game last night. They unfortunately they lost that conference game. What are your impressions of the Crowley's Ridge basketball team from what you've seen so far? Very simple. As Luke Ellis goes, so do the CRA Falcons. I mean, he. Uh, in the previous two games, he scored 30 plus, and I was, you know, I failed to go look to see how many points he scored last night. I know he did not score 30 points last night. They barely scored 40. It was 46 as a team. Yeah. They pretty much bottled him up. Uh, Richfield Christian did. Well, and not only that, they were really fatigued. They from were the overtime yeah, they were worn the down night before. Right. They uh, played Buffalo Island Central, who is no no cakewalk for anybody. Came into their place uh, on Thursday, and. Pretty much, it was a nip tuck game all the way through. And actually, CRA in the in the opening minutes of the second half had a ten point lead on Buffalo Island Central, and then a couple of sequences of, of events, a technical foul, uh, a couple of things happened, and uh, it allowed BIC to, to get back into it. Two technical fouls in the Thursday night game yes. against CRA. Right. Two technical fouls against CRA in last night's game. Right. And, and those, you know, the t- a technical foul is not necessarily for. Uh, uh, temper tantrum or or arguing with the ref or whatever. Some of these technical fouls have been just mindless, silly things that could have been prevented. Little ticky tack things like uh, not putting a player in on onto the book and, and inserting him into the game. Uh, and you know, also, I mean, there was a couple of incidents in the last couple of days where the players did kind of lose their composure yeah. on, on the floor. Yeah, you know, it's about half and half for these technicals that they've been getting lately. That is something that they can correct. That it is, is something yes. that doesn't have to be happening to that's, the Falcons. That's correct, and you know, and I think that that, that they'll get it fixed. I mean, Coach McMillan is is not a, is not a guy who's going to put up with a lot of that stuff. In just in, in my short time of knowing him and being around him, he's a pretty intense coach. Oh yeah, oh yeah, great coach. We've had him on the show before. We'll have him on again. Right. Uh, we really think a lot of uh, Coach McMillan. Um, now we talk about CRA, but there are other schools in the area that are already playing basketball. We've right. had them on the show. Right. We've had uh, we've done Rector. We've done Marmaduke. What other basketball in this very young season, this very early in the season, have you gotten to see so far? Two games, uh, two Marmaduke games uh, versus Armorell in their season open, which was a win for them. That was a home game for Marmorell uh, for for Marmaduke. That's right. It was their home opener. It was their opening game. And then the following week, they played Armorell on the road. We you know, they, that, they've been back and forth between here. here, yeah, between here and Armorell quite a bit. Uh, Marmaduke also played uh, on Tuesday night and lost to uh, Bay. Ooh, Bay is a good team. That's a conference game. Right, for them. Bay's a no, good no, team. no, wait a minute. That used to be a conference game for them. I'm sorry. Bay dropped down to single A. Right. And uh, and Bay, the single A powerhouse that right. they are, right. went to Marmaduke. Right. And, and let me and tell you something. Game at well, and one, one at Handley had a 35 to 20 lead at halftime and held. 
Marmaduke to 0 for 16 in the oh second half from the field. They scored four points the entire second half. Two so free throws it, in the third, two free throws in the fourth. So was it, A, a bad night for Marmaduke, B, a really good night for Bay, or C, a combination of both? All of the above. Yeah. I mean, it was everything. It was, uh, you know, they couldn't – they couldn't get out of their own way in a lot of ways in the second, especially in the second half. They they played with them in the first quarter. Vague uh, jumped out in, in in the second and kind of got a, got a, got about a ten point lead. But man, you could see from the end of that second half or the end of that second quarter on into the second half, they just didn't have it. Yeah, and it just they just wasn't there. Well, we're gonna have Marmaduke again. There are three teams that are outside the five A East that we also give coverage to right. on your primetime sports, Marmaduke being one of them, CRA being one, and Rector. Right. And uh, so we're going to have those teams on frequently until January. January is when 5A East Conference action starts in earnest. Right, and it's Tuesday, Friday, Tuesday, Friday. Right. Co- so starting the first week of January, we are 5A East all the time. Right. But leading up to that, we're getting in as many games from these three small schools that right. we cover as right. we can leading up to 5A East Conference. And you're going to be in Brooklyn on Tuesday night, is that right? That, that, that's a 5A East team playing a non-conference game, doubleheader, Girls and boys, they are hosting Brooklyn, uh, Nettleton is, right. and uh, we'll have that doubleheader for you. You going to be with us? I will have, actually, ASU's home opener is on Tuesday night. Oh, you're going to be at that for yes. Nation? Yes, Monticello, UAM. I got you. Wait a minute. Now, the girls, I'm sorry, the women, the ASU women played UAM in an exhibition That's game. That's correct, last, last week. week. Right. Is this game going to count for the for the? Uh, yes, men? this is the this home opener. Actually, the, the opener. Not an exhibition. No, not an exhibition. Wow, okay, good for good for UAM getting right. to play up like that. That right. uh, should be an easy win for well, ASU. Well, in fact, though. I think today is the is the season opener at Dayton for ASU basketball. That's right. The, the women played Toledo last night. They, right. made a, they, made, they both made a trip up to Ohio. Sure. Uh, the women played at Toledo last night, unfortunately lost by 20-plus. Right. And now the men are playing Dayton today, both those games in Ohio. Uh, so goes Ohio, so goes the nation, as we found out Tuesday night in the election. Right, <laughs> right, right. So right. Uh, everybody, every, all eyes are on Ohio this weekend as far as Arkansas State athletics are concerned. Now, I wouldn't say all eyes. I think if you're a CRC pioneer, you're uh, looking at you're looking at ASU. Tennessee. Well, you're also looking at Tennessee. They're going to Tennessee Tech today. And this is the second time that CRC has played right. Division One Tennessee Tech. Now, right. the first time that they played three years ago, which well, no, it was December 2010, which was we're closing in on the two year mark of that. Mm-hmm. Because the reason I know this so well because it was our very first broadcast on your primetime sports. Sports.com radio. Is that right? Our very first broadcast was a Division One college basketball wow. game. Tennessee you went Tech, to Tennessee we Tech? We went up to Cookville and wow. broadcast courtside on your primetime sports radio as Tennessee Tech just drubbed the Well, I'm, I'm afraid the same, the th- same thing is probably going to happen again. they may again. give them a better fight this year than they did two years ago. Well, and not only that, see, it's not their first Foray in, in the D one, they you know they're and even this year they're going to play Eastern Kentucky this year. And that's another D one. See, they've right. got two D ones. Right, on and, that, that, and I think and I talked to Perkins uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, and he was very excited. I mean, he's trying to get these guys you know a step up. There's a there's obviously a monetary gain, although we don't know what that is because they're not disclosed. Well, they, they, don't don't have, they, don't, they don't have to. They don't have to tell us. But but obviously. But, <laughs> Obviously, there's going to be. One. There's a monetary gain. There, there's that, and then there's you know there's comp- I mean, and I you know he, he gave me a funny line. I asked him if he was worried about injury. He said, you know what, D1 athletes are better athletes. They're not quite as clumsy as D2 athletes. I'm not worried about injury. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's a Perkins line. Right there. We were, uh, yeah, we're going to get him on eventually. We've had Coach Clothier, the women's coach from CRC, right. on this show, and Coach Perkins' schedule is just so tight. We're going to get him on. We just have not been able to accomplish that. He's yet. one of the more media friendly guys around. Oh here. yeah, oh yeah, because yeah, he, sure he used to be a, an SID, I believe, some somewhere far off, is what I was told, and so that makes. Yeah, I think he has a uh, an affinity for guys like us who, who are trying to get. You know, well, plus we've kind of broadcast, we've had lots of different CRC basketball games on your primetime sports radio. We have yet to get a CRC game on YPTS TV. I'm hoping that we, we don't have any on the schedule, but that schedule, since they play a lot of Saturday games, that schedule is fluid where they are concerned, where we can stick one in at any time. And if we get the opportunity to do that, we're going to. Well, and that facility is very accommodating for such, a, oh, absolutely. For such an on-the-fly kind of 
kind of venture. So. That's right. So we're gonna we're hoping to get some CRC basketball on the air this season. Now switching gears, we're gonna go back to Arkansas State University. You work okay. for A State Nation. That's right. Let's talk football. That okay. huge win Thursday night over. Uh, the team that handed Arkansas an overtime loss in Little Rock, Louisiana Monroe. Missing one key element in Jonesboro that they had in Little Rock, and that the is the quarterback, quarterback right. Colton Browning. But the backup quarterback arguably is about as good. That's as, a matter. Of, I mean, uh, that's threw, a matter of opinion. He I mean, threw because for what 400 yards against ASU in that loss? Well, it, it, the thing what. He did most of that in the first half, and I think, look, I'm not going to take away a big win from Arkansas State. It was a big win. It was something they needed. It was a it was a game that fired up the fans. Now, honestly, I think if Louisiana Monroe doesn't beat Arkansas, that you don't have the kind of crowd that you had at that Jonesboro capacity on Thursday. Crowd. It was, I, I mean, mean they were already talking about having a record crowd for a November game anyway. Right. And I haven't seen the numbers, but it may compete for being the record crowd ever. I, I agree, and I've not seen numbers either, but they were talking about it being close to 30,000, the guys That's that were amazing. playing. Ryan Applin said on, on radio yesterday he'd never seen an atmosphere at Arkansas State like it that. Was on it was a Thursday night game. It wasn't even a Saturday game. And you can directly attribute that to the fact that these guys that they were playing Absolutely, beat absolutely. And I think, you know, and honestly, I, I know – the uh, the aunt for the Darius Winston's aunt, okay, and she was at that game, uh, at, at, in Little Rock, and she went and cheered for Arkansas State just to, just for revenge, you that's, know. That's great. I mean, it's great. It's a great thing. And you've been hearing this game was Thursday, and right. on talk radio in Jonesboro, both stations that have both the FM sports talk stations right. in Jonesboro, we've heard nothing but Arkansas's got to play him now. Arkansas's got to play him now. I don't think I don't, that. It's not going to happen. happen. It's not going to happen. I want it to happen. I really do. I think Arkansas is being childish that, in no, not letting it happen. No, actually, they're being smart because. No, I don't. Let I me explain this. Like, I, let me explain this. I've been explained a million times. I know their argument, and I don't think it holds. You don't water. split the. You don't split your market base. You it's, don't split your market it's base. It's two different markets. It's no, it's no, it's not. Markets. There are enough people in our in, in this area in this region that support both. Not so fast. They are. I'm Not telling so you. fast. We are in the Memphis market. I don't care what anybody says. Arkansas State University is in the Memphis market. Arkansas has the lion's share of the rest of the state as far as their quote unquote market goes. Okay, they. It will not be a split in the market. It will definitely generate some more fans for Arkansas State, but. Those fans that it generates for ASU are not going to abandon the Arkansas well, Razorbacks. Let me, well, let me ask you this. How many times do you think that Arkansas State, in a given 20-year period, let's, let, let's, do it, let's do it in 10 years, how many times do you think Arkansas State will legitimately give an SEC team a game? They have. Competitive, competitive game. Well, uh, they played Auburn a few years ago, and if I'm not mistaken, that game was reasonably competitive. Uh, that was at Auburn. Okay, but we're not. But what, what I'm saying is, and you don't necessarily so, have to confine this argument to SEC. They beat Texas A&M, which is now an SEC team. Right. They beat Texas A&M a few years back. Uh, they go on the road constantly to play big teams like that. Sometimes they are competitive games. Uh, the Nebraska game was it the Nebraska game this year that it started out looking like it was going to be, and then Nebraska yeah, started just pulling away. Pulled away, right? Um, but there are times when ASU goes into a bigger conference schools or uh, uh, stadium and gives them a game. Let's say that they that, that we that we do a 10-year contract between Arkansas and Arkansas State and we do it in Little Rock. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it in Little Rock, okay? Okay. Now let's say that Arkansas State is maybe not quite what they are now, but not what they were last year. Okay. You know, let's say they're somewhere in between. Okay. And let's say ASU is at the point they are right now. Are they what I'm saying is is yes. that it's not going to be competitive over a 10-year span. And it, here, here's the thing. It depends because this program is building. But it in may 10 not years, go back to what it was But what was I'm before. saying, but in 10 years, man, it's going to take that long. And fans will lose interest. In the first two or three years, the place is going to sell out. It's going to be nothing. but Nothing but pandemonium the first the first two or three years until the I new wears off. Up. I think it'll hold up. There's no The new will never wear off. I don't think it will. I, it, I think, has the new worn off between Oklahoma and Oklahoma State? Has the new worn They're in the same between, conference. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Has the new worn off between Alabama and Auburn? It doesn't They're in matter. the same conference. It doesn't matter. There are schools that are not in the same conference that play each other all the time. 
Florida State, Miami, or Florida, Florida State? Has the new worn off between those two? Arkansas State is a Sun Belt Conference. To, it is a, the, the size of the university. It just no, there's really no comparison to that. It's only because their national exposure has been limited. And by the conference and the size of school they are, they are only by the University they, of Arkansas. No, all no, the, no, all no, no, eyes no, no. Focus on the Razorbacks and almost never focus on the Red Wolves. If you put those two playing Arkansas together, Sta- more people in the state of Arkansas would start to take notice of the Red Wolves. Arkansas State has only been a D1 program for less than 20 years. Okay, so they are young. Arkansas has been a D1 program for lots, lots okay. longer. Okay, Trust they've been me. had to look. Give them time to grow. I'm not saying it can't happen. I'm saying give them time to grow. They're going to have to progress. They're going to number one. They got to get out of the Sunbelt Conference, and they have to move they're, up. Hey, they're looking at. They've been looking at that for a while. I Conference think USA. I mean, in Conference USA. That's but and that, you know what? And that's let them progress. And I think once that both schools are on an, on an even plane, and they're not. Once they're on an even plane. I, I disagree. I think that if they plane. lined up right now, Arkansas State would whip them. Right now is – is I'm talking over a 10-year period of time. Okay. I'm not talking about right. Right now you're probably right, but that hasn't been the case up until right now. Okay. I think that they'll never get on an even plane until they begin to play. That, that, that no, I, I disagree. in and of itself will start the process of putting them on an even plane. But, Ar- but what – and what's – what advantage is that for Arkansas to be able to, to bring them into an even plane? There are Arkansas fans right now, a lot of Arkansas fans right now, that want the game, even though the University of Arkansas doesn't. The advantage would be um, uh, appeasing your fan base. Maybe, to a degree. You know, I don't think there's enough. I don't think there's enough Arkansas people that want to see ASU. I mean, there are some that want to keep the money in the state. And I'm not not just talking about Arkansas fans. I'm talking about sports fans within our state, period. Whether it's a Henderson State University fan or whoever it may be. But for for a fan, you're exactly right. But for a university, university, there is nothing – at this point, there is nothing for them to gain – by playing but, Arkansas but State. But they have things to lose by continuing to refuse. I think they believe that there is more to lose if they keep, if they if they agree. Okay. We we I don't think we're going to agree on. We may that. not. <laughs> we're going to take We're a not break. supposed to agree on everything. We're going to take a break and when we come back we're going to talk a little bit of 5A East football action in the playoffs. We're going to talk 5A playoff bracket when we come back on your primetimesports.com. You get big time savings. Retirement? It's never looked so good. Welcome to Chateau on the Ridge Assisted Living in Paragould, Arkansas. Say hello to fine dining and down-home living, where around-the-clock security and peace of mind are always at your fingertips. And front row seats to the best shows? They're included. We call it Chateau on the Ridge. You can call it home. Call or visit today to get the whole scoop. Do you need insurance? If the answer is yes, let Chris Robinson and his staff at Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency handle your needs. Whether it's auto, life, business, or planning for your retirement, Chris Robinson's Insurance Agency is ready to serve you and your family. Come by Chris Robinson Insurance Agency, 1211 West Court Street in Paragould. At First National Bank, you have convenience right at your fingertips. And instant buying power, it's so easy. And when you're on the go, well, you know what to do. We understand the importance of now. First National Bank, the working bank for working people. back on right now. Hey, we're back here on Double G 
Sports Talk Saturday. There we are. Are we back, really? We are back after that break, that two-minute uh, quick break. Yeah, I've been that was running four-minute breaks all morning long, and I, I forgot that uh, that was a two-minute break. And we were in, in deep conversation. We with, were talking uh, some, to some, Megan Books, from yeah. the, uh, a graduate of the uh, Green County Tech Lady Eagles. We were talking to her about uh, uh, high school basketball, which has begun in right. earnest. Uh, and the bigger schools will start playing this coming week. Yes. And, now, you know, we – and I, I, fa- I have forgotten, and I should have brought my schedules with me. But you know, the, the Friday is when the bigger schools begin play. Thursday, right, no, Friday. no, Tuesday, because Nettleton is. We got Nettleton on uh, on Tuesday. I'm night. talking about Imperial. That's right. We're You're going right. Imperial. But the five A East schools, the ones right. that are not playing football, some of them begin as early as this Tuesday when we we have the Nettleton game. Guess what comes out on Sunday? Tomorrow. Yes. What? Your the basketball tab comes out uh, in, the, in the Paragool Daily Press. Yes, correct. And you uh, figure prominently in that. You did the uh, lion's share. About four share. of them. About four of them, yeah. We yeah. About four of them. We'll pick that up in the newsstands everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere in Greene County. I want to tell you, um, I am very impressed with some of the coaches that, that I've gotten to, to sit down and talk to. Really? Yes. Uh, Scott Boland. I love Bowling. Was such an Bowling inter- will come in here what a great and put on interview. a show in and of himself. Oh, what a great interview. 19 minute interview on my, I have it on my recorder right you here. You can't get him 19 stopped. minutes and it felt like five. Yeah. I mean it felt like five. It yeah, was we great. could talk to him. We we have him on the show frequently. Oh, we could talk I mean, to him for all day. Hours, yep. man. Hours. And then uh Jay Cook, another Jay Cook and I, I think I've told you this, we went to elementary school together. We went to uh maybe I haven't told you this. No, I did not. We know we went to kindergarten through fifth grade, same class at Lakeside Elementary in Hot Springs. Arkansas, and uh, uh, we went our separate ways and ended up converging back here in Paragould years and years Ooh, later in our lives. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it's a small world. Yeah. Yeah, but we've, small. we've known each other since we were five years old. That's crazy. Will he admit it? Oh, yeah, he'll tell you. you. he will? He's like, sure. oh, yeah, that grim. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have a, you know... I, uh, I have to hide my face sometimes when people know who I don't know you. you know, yeah, you know thanks that, right? a lot, Bruce. <laughs> Appreciate that. Right here live on television. Yeah. Start well, talking to me. Oh, all okay. five people. <laughs> yeah. Okay, play let's talk 5A East football. Sure. Uh, two games, uh, four games last night, two right. teams won, two teams lost, and it went exactly the way we expected it was going to. Win one big. Batesville won really big over my elementary alma mater, what we just talked right, about, right. Hot Springs Lakeside. And uh, BB, oh, my gosh, BB, poor BB. What was the final score? Thrown to the wolves. What was this? 70 to 20. I'm not surprised. And, I'm surprised. Uh, I am actually a little surprised they got 20. You and and then of course Four City in what was at times a close game ended up uh, falling by the wayside against uh, Whitehall. Whitehall last right. night. So we've got the two teams from the Five A East still alive that we expected to be alive. Right. Um, and I'm telling you, and I've been saying this. I said it in the first hour of the show. I've been saying it for seven eight weeks on on your primetime sports. We are heading for. A 5A East showdown in the championship game in War Memorial in Little Rock. Batesville versus Wynn. No way. Okay, I knew you were going to disagree. Absolutely not. I knew you were going to disagree. Absolutely not. I contend that the actual championship will be played a week before when Camden Fairview and Wynn play each other. That should be the championship matchup. Okay, all right, but... You also have PA on the other side, man. I, I just got done saying that Batesville has to go through Pulaski County right. to get to the championship right. game, and I think they can beat them. I don't think so. Okay, we're going to I think it's going to be win in Pulaski Academy. They yeah. could make me wrong, and I've been wrong lots of times before, but that is my prediction. Well, I'm And gonna, now I want to hear yours. I'm going to tell you, the PA win matchup, I really, really want to see. Okay. But, but the thing is, I also want to see Camden Fairview and win. And the same week. Okay. I, it's, and it's just. And I'll tell you this. No, 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 no. I know what I said was I want I want PA and win in, in, in the championship. And the week before, I want to see both of them. I want to see Camden Fairview right. play win. And, and they're want, playing the same week as, as PA and Baseville. Right. In the same week. Right. It's Thanksgiving weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, we, right now, are looking at a 50-50 shot of whether or not we are going to broadcast the the Rumble on the Ridge in Four City. It's a three-day event, mm-hmm. and it's um, uh, 24 games, something like that. It's 24 games in three days. We may broadcast that. We may not. Wow. If we don't, I guarantee I know where I'm going to be that Friday night. Ooh. We're going to make the drive down. We're not going to broadcast it. We're not. We're just going to go as a fan. We're going to go down. We may do some live tweeting and live Facebook posts uh, from that stadium in Win. And that's going to be That'll the be game amazing. of the year. Amazing! That will be amazing. You going to go with? Us? I'm thinking I might. Okay. And you know the, the the thing that I want to do, what I want to do is I want to see North Little Rock play. 
I want to see Alti Tenpenny before he goes to Alabama. And they played at uh, Jonesboro this, this year. Right, well, yeah. it was, it was we, such we a rain it was soaked. A, oh, my oh gosh. It was, a, it, was a, it was a terrible night. One of many terrible nights in the football season this year. But uh, I want to go see – and Brad Bolding is a, is, a, is a friend of mine, and just he coached my son uh, in his junior and senior year. Really? Uh, my son was a starting safety for Brad Bolding three years ago. At what he, school? North Little Rock High. That's right. Okay. And uh, he uh, he was on that team with Tim Johnson and a lot of those guys that went went uh, D well you say D one well, UAPB mostly. Well, and, UAPB uh, is Division it is One. Division one. It's it's just just, subdivision. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's a football bowl subdivision. That's right. And a really 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 good team. This year's team undefeated in conference for the first time since the schools. Merged from between Northeast and Old Main. Right. First time they went undefeated in conference. Uh, used to be, yeah. Used to be the Little got, Rock. Uh, it was Old, the Old Main and Northeast. Old Main and North Little Rock Northeast. Right. And in what I guess it was about 1989 or 90, somewhere probably in the 91, early, 91, early 90s. 91. Okay, they consolidated those two massive schools, and that didn't make any sense to people at the time because years later Springdale's trying to split their schools up. Right. Right. But they made this massive school, which is now North Little Rock, the Charging Wildcats, because mm-hmm. it was the Chargers and the Wildcats. And, right. Uh, and now they finally got a, uh, a a football powerhouse there in North uh, Little I'm going to tell you, and they, it is a big-time powerhouse. He's got three backs right now. He's got Alti Tenpenny, he's got Juwan Day, and he's got Rodney Bryson. I guarantee you all three of those guys are going to college. I think the first two are probably going to go ACC. Tenpenny has already committed to Alabama. Day is a junior this year. He's going to be a top back next year. He's wow. going to be he's going to be sought after. Well, we you know we we get so focused in on the five A classification here at yourprimetimesports.com right. that we've got tunnel vision and we a lot of times a lot of things that are going on in these other classifications slip by us. We right. don't know what's going on. So first of all, I think number one, Jonesboro won last night. Is that right. correct? So yes. they're moving on to play. I believe Lake Hamilton in the second round. They beat Texarkana last night, fifty-five have, to twenty. That's right. I have not looked at a six A, seven A bracket. Six uh, A is all. It, it's separated now. They've separated, they, they separated them out. In okay. for the playoffs now. For so the playoffs, it's everybody separate. in six A goes to the playoffs. The every, entire every, every six A school every goes six to the A's, playoffs. Yes. Well, then where's the suspense in that? There is no suspense. You're not in playing it. for you know. It's the only the... classification in the whole state. Well, seven A must do it too, no. right? No. No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Who came up with that? Uh, your beloved Triple A. No, 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 no. We can't. <laughs> we got to keep them our buddies. We can't really. Okay. Your beloved. Uh, in in this cycle, Benton rolled over Russellville last night. Uh, let's see. Oh, is North Little Rock 6A or 7A? They're 7A. They've got to be 7A. They're so 7A. we will not see North Little Rock and Jonesboro face each other in the playoffs because no. they've separated out for the playoffs. That's correct. Which I did not know until you just told me right. because I haven't been paying attention but to But they it. played uh, They played Marion. They played West Memphis. They played Jonesboro. They've done all of that. They, they're they in the 7A, 6A East. And they're the only team that, the 7, that was a 7A school previous that okay. are in that league. Well, it's like Bryant is in the 7A, 6A South, and they were the only – only team in that conference that plays that goes up to the that goes to seven, seven eight. Right. Okay, I get it now. Yeah. I think it's kind of silly, but it is, silly. it is what it is. But it is for what it was is that AAA was trying to cut down on travel. travel. You're right. That's I know. Yeah. Okay, so have you looked at a six A bracket? No. Jones, okay, see, neither have I. We have to pull it. We can pull it up on the internet. Yeah, I can't right now while we're uh, Jonesboro. I think. Boy, I'd, I'd like to see them win. Last last year they got so close, didn't pull it off. This I'd like to see them win. Pine year. Bluff is going to be in six A. Yes, is, is going to be one team that's going to going to give them a problem. You know what I I found interesting, and I didn't realize this until last night, because I got to looking at this five A bracket. Jacksonville has dropped down to five A. Yes, they're in the five A Central, Can you and they finished that? in third. You know, they up until. Uh, Two weeks, not this, not last night, but last week, they were they were undefeated in conference with Mills and Pulaski Academy left to play. They lost a heartbreaker to Mills, and then they got drugged by Pulaski Academy. Yeah. I don't know what they did last night, but Jacksonville. They, they, it, yeah. they lost last night. I can bring that up because I have it up on my screen already. Uh, Jacksonville lost to Moralton big last night, 42-14, and that sets up an interesting matchup in the second round because Coach Chris Hill, the head coach of Wynn, came to win mm-hmm. from the Moralton Devil Dogs. Right, right, That's right. Good That's going to be funny. That's going to be fun. Wynn's going to win that. I yeah, fully I, believe I believe that too. Wins, I fully believe Wynn's going to win the state championship. They will beat Camden Fairview in the semifinals, and they will go on to face whoever they face. I think it will be Baseville. Right. He thinks it's going to be Pulaski I Academy. I think it's going to be Pulaski Academy. Now, let, let, now here, um, because, look, Jacksonville, the, 
the, what's remarkable about them, they were undefeated in conference, like I said. They'd lost three games in a row. They finished the year with losing three games in a row. They had guys in, in their skill spots. That they had like four different guys that could play quarterback. And they had a guy that was uh, Kevin, Richards, Kevin Richardson, who was their starting quarterback last year, didn't take a snap this year. Wow. Didn't take a snap. What position is he playing? A receiver, and he has now, been all – I mean, he, he was averaging 200 total yards – as a receiver and running back, he didn't have to take a snap. Well, and they're not going to have to do any more snaps now. No. They lost big. But, you know, devil it, dog. Well, and, and the whole thing was is that uh, that offense that they installed was brand new in the summer. They did it in the summertime, and they just it just took off like game boxers until they ran into Mills. And I think maybe psychologically they might have had a little a little trouble. And I also want to say something about Sylvan Hills. Okay. Who they're backed, they're who backed 6A in. now, right? No, Sylvan Hills is, is, so in, is Sylvan in this Sylvan Hills bracket. is in this. Is yeah, they're in the 5A Central. They lost to. Oh, uh, there they are right yeah. there. They played Greenbrier yeah, last they, night. Yeah, they lost I, to Greenbrier. Didn't they used to be higher than they? Did no, they no, they were, they were, no, no, they were 5A. They, they were, were 5A, they were, okay. They were just in different leagues. They were in the 5A Southeast for the longest time. Right. Uh, they're in the 5A Central this year. Jim Withrow, who used to be the, the coach at Mills okay. uh, a, a, a few years ago, right. moved over to Sylvan Hills. He had a really, really young team with a patchwork offensive line. Uh, loses a, a a stinker to Little Rock Christian, 28 to nothing in a game. And he said they just absolutely laid an egg in. Yeah. And then I didn't they know get, bears could lay eggs. Well, they whew, they laid an egg in this one. Let me, oh, let me tell you, brother. But uh, they, they get to the to the final game of the playoffs, okay? They get there, and they, they're they playing North Pulaski, okay? North Pulaski is a doormat, just like they've been in, in every, every other year they've been. Oh, you're talking about in the regular season? Yes. Okay. Now, this is the res- regular season finale. Now, all he's talking about now is because what has to happen like is like uh, McClellan had to beat Little Rock Christian for even Sylvan Hills to, to, to have a chance. Right. He finds out with four minutes to go in the North Pulaski game that McClellan indeed beat Little Rock Christian 35-28. Exactly. Which is and got him in the playoffs And yeah. got him in the playoffs. McClellan hasn't hardly won – Anything all year long. Well, uh, it was the biggest long shot also, of scenarios. McClellan has been a perennial doormat. The Lions have oh, been yeah. a perennial doormat yes. as well. So yes. for them to beat Little Rock Christian is is uh, something Monumental. Right there, well, yeah. because Little Rock Christian was riding high. All they had to do was win, and they were in. Yep. That's all they had to do. And, you know, some people say it's unfair the way they've got it set up because numbers-wise, sheer numbers-wise, Little Rock Christian wouldn't even be a 5A school. Right. They've got that 1.75 rule where your students in a private school count as 1.75 kids in figuring up the numbers of kids that go to that right. school. So Little Rock Christian, CAC, Pulaski Academy, they are all actually playing up. CAC plays in the 4A. Yes. They should be in 3A. Pulaski Academy and Little Rock Christian playing in the 5A. They should probably be in the 4A. They were in 4A up until this year. Right. And, so, and, and well, CAC, CAC was. I think Pulaski Academy and Shiloh Christian were both in 4A. Shiloh, and it yeah. was basically Pulaski Academy. When we're talking about playoff matchups and things like that, who was going to win a state title in 4A? Okay, it's going to be Pulaski Academy or Shiloh, everybody else. Well, and now you've got teams like Stuttgart that are coming in, in the, that are coming in and making waves in the 4A. Dollarway is, is in it. They're, I mean, it, it opens up the field for other teams. because for I mean, some of these schools, okay, yeah, some of them do. You can't use the word recruit, okay? But they do offer scholarships right. to folks to go to their school. They get players. And if, Let's just say they if, get players. And if those kids that they offer scholarships to mm. happen to be athletes. And very good athletes. That's just, you know, they can they, – they can. I want to. I don't want to use the word "get away with," but they do yeah, get yeah. away with. Yeah. So that is why this system has been put in place. But while it, it doesn't affect some schools like CAC who beat Valley View right. at Valley View last night, right. while it doesn't affect some of these schools and they continue to thrive and succeed in the conferences that they end up in, there are other schools that it has a detrimental effect on. So where do you? Uh, it's just well, awfully, you know, awfully also, Dave, there's an, even an, another dynamic to this. And, and the thing is, it doesn't have anything to do with private schools. But let's go back to North Little Rock and the Sylvan Hills. Now, they're very close proximity. Sylvan Hills and Sherwood. Right down JFK and, and, and over to Maine right. is North Little Rock, okay? You, they, get, they, come from, they, they, they pull from a lot of the same kids in the same area, okay? Nathan Brown, a 1,000-yard rusher in, at Sylvan Hills, okay? Uh, against teams like Little Rock Christian – in, in the same league as Pulaski Academy and Jacksonville, a thousand yard rusher in the five A Central, he would have been fourth or fifth guy You're at right. North Little Rock, You're and right. then he drifted. What he does, and so he transfers. He's able to play, but he's still if he's at North Little Rock, 
That's how stacked yeah, yeah. north of the river they are. You don't see them. That's right. You, you never see them get on the field. And that is how stacked. I mean, Withrow tell me. He said, "I'm just, I'm just waiting for, you know, whatever transfer I can get." He said, "I'll take, I'll take Brad Bowling's scraps." You know. Well, anything. and and you know, news came out a few months back that the school choice laws in Arkansas uh, may have to be struck down. So we may not see a lot of that transfer between schools happen very, very soon. Well, and I think it's it's a shame in, in some instances, but I think it, it's probably to keep down some of the the quotes. Recruiting, for recruiting. lack of better, for lack of better it happens, activity. We know it happens. If you get caught doing it, you're in big trouble. But right. the private schools completely can do it legally and call it a scholarship. That's right. So anyway, we've gotten way, way. We've covered just about everything we can cover. I guess so. For one How day. How much time we got left? Are we, we over? We're out. We're out. We're out of time. Oh wow! The show is coming to it's an kaput. end. It's kaput. I want to thank Gail Mag for coming on the show, author of the. Uh, Hang on, I want to bring that back up. The name of the book is Jack Dale, The Life and Times of an Unforgettable Coach. And he was the coach of the Perigold Bulldogs back in the 50s. And he wrote an autobiography, I say autobiography, a, a biography, biography about right, right. that coach. And that is available at Lantern Bookstore here in Perigold. And it's also available on Amazon.com. Then we had the legend, Bill Dance, the most famous fisherman ever on the show this morning after the uh, – uh, trip we made over to sit down with Did him. Did he give you a Tennessee Vols hat? Dude, he gave me a I saw the sign. Signed, was it, was it, he just gave you a sign. It's on my mantle at home right wow. now. And when we, if and when we set up a studio to do this show in. Uh, a man cave, even? A man, some kind of a man cave studio. Right. We got, I, I guarantee you that's going to be on the yeah. desk yeah. of the, of the it should broadcast be. desk. So, should yeah, be. we got that. Thank you very much, Bill Dance, for coming on the show. Next week's legend. Larry Lacewell will be right wait. here live Cannot in Baton's wait. Donuts. I got and, a story uh, about Larry Lacewell real quick. God, Do we have to get it? off the air, man. Oh, okay. Okay, Can, never mind. Come back next week and well, tell well, yes, the story. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, save that for I'll, I'll do it on the air on. with him. I'll ask him if he remembers. Okay, I'll have to bring the cordless mics. Don't let That's me forget to bring the cordless mics. Okay, this is Bruce Guthrie. I'm Dave Grimm for Clifton Garmouth. Today's Triple G Sports yes, Talk Saturday. Yes, yes, see? That sounds good. Has come to an end. We will see you. Wait a minute. I'm trying to get us off here. Yeah, there we go. Fade to black. Fade, fade to black? All right. We'll see you next time.